Hi everybody, it's Miss Hamill and I'm here to talk to you today about cells, particularly about cell structure and function and the role of active and passive transport in cells. So there are your unit goals. You need to know the three parts of the cell theory. You need to understand the different types of microscopes and how they function, the structure and function of all of the basic cellular organelles. You need to understand how a cell maintains homeostasis and understand the difference between passive and active transport and osmosis. So the three parts of the cell theory. First, we have that all living things are made of cells. Easy. Two, cells are the basic unit of structure and function in an organism. Therefore, they are the basic unit of life. The third thing is all cells come from the reproduction of existing cells. Now the cell theory has been developed over many years by many scientists and there are the scientists right there on the screen. First we have Hooke and Robert Hooke was the first to really look at cells under a microscope or to know what he was looking at. So he had a primitive microscope and he was looking at cork and he determined that they look like little cells that a monk would live in so he called them cells. Then we had Anton van Leeuwenhoek who looked at his teeth, the, particularly the, the gunk that he scraped off of his teeth, and he looked at the first bacteria. So he discovered the first bacteria. Then we had a man named Sheldon, Schleiden, sorry, Schleiden. He determined that all plants were made of cells. Then we had a scientist named Schwann, and he determined that all animals were named of cells made of cells, therefore all living things were made of cells. And then finally we had a scientist named Virchow and he determined that cells come from other cells, only come from existing cells. So we have two basic types of cells. We have prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. The main difference is a prokaryotic cell does not have a nucleus or membrane bound organelles, where the eukaryotic cells have a nucleus and membrane bound organelles. The eukaryotic cells are a little bit larger, actually quite larger than the prokaryotic cells. And the prokaryotic cells are going to be bacteria. All bacteria are prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells are going to be all other cells. So they'll be the animal cells, the plant cells, the protist cells, they would be fungi. So all other cells besides bacteria. Um, the eukaryotic cells are more complex where the prokaryotic cells are more simplistic, they don't have as many parts. Now the endosymbiotic theory is a theory that states that eukaryotic cells have evolved from prokaryotic cells. Really it's kind of a simple theory that the prokaryotic cells consumed another prokaryotic cell leading to the eukaryotic cells, the organelles within the eukaryotic cells. The evidence for this would be the mitochondria and the chloroplast within the eukaryotic cells are much like a prokaryotic cell. They have a lot of common characteristics, including they have their own DNA, um, they have their own set of ribosomes, they are very much like a prokaryotic cell. Now we have two different types, or we have many different types of um, eukaryotic cells, but the main two types that you need to focus on are the plant and animal cell and the differences between them. The animal cell is going to have two different organelles that are not found in the plant cell. They're the lysosomes and the centriole. And the lysosomes function is to, they're basically the cleanup crew of the cell, they're crew of the cell. They're going to digest um, waste and food within the cell. And the centrioles are very important in cellular division. In the plant cell we have three different organelles that are not found within the animal cell. We have the vacuole. An animal cells do have vacuoles, but they are not a large central vacuole, which is found in the plant cell. It stores water and nutrients. We have the chloroplasts, which are the site of photosynthesis, and the cell wall, which gives the plant cell structure and support. So here is just a list of some of the basic cellular structures. We have the nucleus, which is found only in eukaryotic cells. It stores the DNA and it controls the processes that occur within the cell. 
We have the nucleolus. It's going to make the ribosomes. It's found only in eukaryotic cells, both plant and animal. We have ribosomes. They are the smallest organelle. They are basically tiny little dots that are the site of protein synthesis. They are found in all cells, both plant, animal, and prokaryotic cell. We have the endoplasmic reticulum. We have the smooth ER and the rough ER. And they are basically a long channel and they have ribosomes and they make proteins and lipids. So they synthesize products that are used for cellular processes. They are found in eukaryotic plant and animal cells. We have the Golgi body, which is going to take the proteins and products that are produced in the ribosomes and they're going to package them and basically sort them and send them outside of the cell. It's found in plant and animal eukaryotic cells. We have lysosomes, which I mentioned on the last time, slide, only found in animal cells, and they are going to clean up the dead parts of the cell as well as bacteria and food waste. We have the vacuole. Again, it's found in both cells, but only a large central vacuole is found in plant cells, and it stores water, waste, and food. We have the cell membrane, which is not necessarily an organelle, but it is an important structure that surrounds the cell that maintains what goes into and out of the cell. It's found in all cells. We have the mitochondria, which is found in all, pro, I'm sorry, it's found in eukaryotic plant and animal cells. And this is important because many people think that they do not um, occur within a plant cell, but they do. Plant cells are going to use cellular respiration as well as photosynthesis for metabolism. So they make ATP from the food we eat and they are going to be the site of cellular respiration. Chloroplasts are only found in plants. They are going to be the site of photosynthesis. The cell wall is only found in plants. It's also found in fungi and prokaryotic cells as well. And it is a site that gives support and protection. And then finally, the central, which is found in animal cells only, and it's important in cell division. So you need to know many of these important functions of the different types of um, organelles and where they are found, which type of cell they are found. So now we're going to focus on cellular um, movement, so how things get into and out of cells. So cells are small and they have to be small because of the surface area to volume ratio. Cells need to be small because the materials need to get into and out of the cell very quickly. They're, the DNA needs to control the cell and we need enzymes that would need to function properly within the cell. And they need to be small for this purpose. So the cell membrane is selectively permeable, which is an important vocabulary term. That means that things can go into and out of the cell, but only particular things. So the cell chooses what goes in and what goes out based on the structure of the, the whatever is going in, the substance that's going into and out of the cell. So structure, of the cell membrane. It is made of lipids and proteins. The lipids are called phospholipids and it's basically a, a bilayer. So it's two layers of phospholipids and it has a hydrophilic head, which is the top of the circle, and hydrophobic tail. Hydrophilic means they love water. Hydrophobic means afraid of water. And this helps to prevent things from going into and out of the cell. So it limits the movement with across the cell membrane. And then we have the channel proteins. And the channel proteins basically are a tunnel that allow things to pass through in passive transport. We have carrier proteins. And the carrier proteins are going to open and close. It's like a gate that allows certain molecules to pass through. And finally, we have receptor proteins and they're going to receive messages from the outside of the cell to create a response within the cell. So it's important in cellular communication. So we have two types of transport. We have passive transport, which does not require 
energy and we have active transport which does require energy. The main difference is the amount of energy used as well as the concentration. So passive transport is going to move from an area of high concentration to low concentration where active transport is going to move against the concentration gradient from a low concentration to high concentration. So again, passive transport is from high to low concentration and it's going to flow like a river and it's going to move until it reaches equilibrium. Passive transport, again, it goes with the concentration gradient. No energy is needed. There are examples. One is diffusion, and that will be just through the um, lipids, phospholipids. And then we have facilitated diffusion, which includes the protein channel. So they'll move through from high concentration to low concentration using these channel proteins as a tunnel for support. Osmosis is diff the diffusion of water molecules, only water molecules from high concentration to low concentration. We have three types. One is called hypotonic solution. This is when water is going to move into the cell from a high concentration to low concentration and the cell could burst if it's an animal cell. If it is a plant cell, it's just going to swell. Um, it has support from, excuse me, the cell wall Isotonic solution, it's equal on both sides. And then on a hypertonic solution, there is a higher concentration. Therefore, the water is going to move out of the cell and it will shrivel, shrivel up. If it's a plant cell, it will wilt. So hypertonic solution is above strength, too much solute or salt or whatever material is dissolved within the water. So the cell will shrink. Hyper Photonic is above strength, the cell will swell. Again, I remember this by hypertonic. If you're hyper, you move around a lot, so therefore you're skinny. If you are hypotonic, it reminds me of a hippo. Hippos are a big animal, so they swell. Isotonic will be equal. So active transport is going to require energy. It moves against the concentration gradient from low concentration of solute to high concentration of solute. And there are different types. One is endocytosis. This is bringing large molecules into, endo is into the cell. There are two types. There's phagocytosis and pinocytosis. Phagocytosis brings solids in, pino brings liquids in. Then we have exocytosis, and this is basically the kicking out or pushing out of large molecules from the cell. So that is all for this unit. Please review um, and take the review quiz and go back through your interactive notebook and check out the information that we've learned in the past. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me, and I hope you have a great study session and a fabulous night.